Welcome back to In Focus. It's time for our Africa Health Network update. Health reporter Lino Mudu joins us now with some information on tuberculosis, HIV and AIDS. Hello, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Hello, everyone. Well, today we'll take a look at how tuberculosis is affecting the fight against HIV AIDS. But first, in a report released yesterday, UNAIDS, the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, says more than 8 million HIV positive people worldwide are receiving antiretroviral drug therapy, a 20% increase over the past year. UNAIDS says more nations are increasing their own share of investments for HIV and domestic funding for HIV AIDS has exceeded international investments. Domestic, domestic public spending in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, increased by 97% over the last five years. And 25,000 people are slated to gather here in Washington next week for the World AIDS Conference. Global health experts are expected to focus on HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis as well. TB is a leading cause of HIV-related death worldwide. In South Africa, 40% of people with TB also have HIV. And there is a growing TB threat to children. Khalil Gay has more. These children spend their afternoons doing what they love, playing carefree games. But instead of being with her friends, 12-year-old Imelda Messier has been staying at the nearby Brooklyn Chester Hospital in Cape Town, where she has been treated for TB for the past five months. It's been tough living away from her family. I miss them so much. I long for them. They long for me. These babies have to be separated from their mothers as they receive much needed treatment in a hospital. Childhood TB expert Professor Robert Gee from Stellenbosch University near Cape Town says pregnant women as well as babies and toddlers are particularly vulnerable to TB and have been neglected in research. Babies are often prone to severe TB, like TB meningitis. Young children under the age of about one year have about a five to tenfold greater chance of developing severe tuberculosis than older children. And so they are much more vulnerable. Babies often have to endure uncomfortable and traumatic tests to diagnose for TB. TB medication has not changed for decades. The drugs are hard, bitter, and difficult to swallow, can make children nauseous, and in extreme cases, lead to loss of hearing. Pediatrician at the hospital, Gerald Markell, says mothers need constant encouragement to keep going with the medication for their babies. It's difficult for them to swallow five, six, seven tablets. The tablets have to be crushed so that babies can swallow them. As bitter as the medication may be, without proper treatment, TB often kills. The message is being carried from Cape Town to New York, home to global celebrity Whoopi Goldberg, who is a champion in the fight against TB. Listen, children around the world are dying from tuberculosis. You know why that's shocking? Because 200 children every day die from a disease that is curable. Now we all need to work together to change this. Our goal should be and must be no more children dying from TB. Healthy children like Ilam Mkoka are proof that medication and care can make the world of difference. Ilam's mother, Sheila, is thrilled to have him back from hospital and fully recovered from TB. I feel free and I am happy because I took my child early and he is sitting next to me and he is not sick. That's the goal for more children across the world. Less illness and zero TB death in children. Khalil Gay for VOA News. Joining us now on the phone from Durban, South Africa, is uh, Professor Salim Abdul Karim. He is the director of CAPRISA, the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa. Professor Karim, welcome to the program. 
Thank you very much. Let me have your reaction on the report you, you just heard. Do you think there should be more research in terms of uh, childhood tuberculosis? And in what aspect? So it's really a very sad situation that we continue to have tuberculosis being such a challenge, especially in children. When we talk about patients who have HIV infection, they are particularly at risk of acquiring TB. So in many instances, these are children of mothers who have HIV and TB. And because these children are spent such long periods in close proximity to their mothers, they acquire tuberculosis. Now, they don't only acquire it from mothers, but that's one of the main ways in which they acquire uh, tuberculosis. The problem is it's very hard to diagnose tuberculosis in children because you don't really have, you know, they can't cough up sputum. You can't tell them, you know, give me sputum like you would in an adult. So we have many challenges in trying to diagnose tuberculosis in children. The x-rays are not conclusive. So eventually we end up doing what is called a gastric lavage, putting a tube into the stomach through the esophagus and drawing up fluid from the stomach. Now you can imagine you know, how challenging that is. It sounds challenging indeed. Dr. Dr. Karim, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, now, if uh, TB is a leading cause of death, uh, HIV-related death globally, does it mean that all T HIV patients develop uh, TB at a certain point? No, not at all. Okay. What we have is a situation where uh, in much of sub-Saharan Africa, because people acquire their first exposure to TB when they're very young, when their CD4 counts deteriorate normally to around 200 or so, then a fair proportion would develop tuberculosis. We estimate in South Africa that about 70% of patients who present with AIDS present with tuberculosis as the first opportunistic infection in HIV. Okay, and we only have 20 seconds, but quickly tell us next week there will be the Global AIDS Conference. What do you think should be the focus? Well, I think next week is going to be an amazing occasion. It's an occasion to dedicate ourselves to ending the HIV epidemic, to creating an AIDS-free generation. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, Professor Salim. And that was Professor Salim Abdul Karim, Director of Caprissa, South Africa. And that's VOA's Africa Health Network report for today. For more information on today's story and other health developments, well, be sure to visit our website at africahealthnetwork.com. Vincent? Well, thanks a lot, uh, Lino. Be sure to watch In Focus throughout next week for Lino Madu's uh, a special coverage of the World AIDS Conference right here on In Focus.